There you have it. The introductions have been made. Barry Windham uh, on the right side of your screen now. Kevin Sullivan in the gold and black bunks to the left side of your screen. Only seven pounds that separate these two men, although Windham has a beautiful placeless takedown by uh, Barry Windham. And a good escape by Kevin Sullivan. And a leapfrog by Barry Windham and... Mike, right there, good I'm telling you, Gordon, most of these men are teed up, fired up. I could see Barry getting all excited like that, coming out like gangbusters. But I would figure Kevin would be a little cooler head and try to pace himself a little more. Of course, when somebody's coming after you, you got to be defensive and you got to be right with them. So this, there's no telling what could happen here today. I am frankly amazed at the, uh, the intensity of this early on. You'd think that, uh, of course, I suppose they feel that they know each other well enough. Uh, from the standpoint of competitors that uh, uh, I'm sure they have been studying films uh, good duck under go behind and a take down by Kevin Sullivan and these uh, these two men are moving at an, an amazingly rapid pace for this heat and for this time limit well you know that's exactly right Gordon but again they might not be thinking about the time limit they're out there right now they're trying to beat each other and one figure and the quicker I can wear my opponent down the more vulnerable, vulnerable he's going to be and I noticed Coach uh, Heath has been very busy uh, scoring along as uh, this match has progressed, and it is uh, Kevin Sullivan now. And Wyndham slips away from it, goes to a side headlock, has Sullivan back to the campus. The Florida Heavyweight Championship on the line. One ball, television time remaining. I think both men realizing at this point that it is awfully hot out there that they're going to have to try to save their energy that they're not going to be able to go both men are in too good a shape and they're too good of wrestlers to go out and just one automatically beat the other one they're going to have to wear each other down they're going to have to pick a, a body part and work on it and hang on to it and they're just going to have to try to wear each other down now the leapfrog by uh, Barry Windham rolls up in behind his man has him in a rolling reverse and uh, Sullivan slips away from it there's what I was talking about earlier you've got Barry Windham with the reach Kevin bent down, Barry just jumped right over him. But you've got the strength in Kevin's legs and back that when Barry did roll him up, there was no way he could hold him. It's still too fresh. Before this match began, I thought that it would be the riding ability and the long, the, uh, long body style of Wyndham that he would go to that. And I figured that Sullivan would come in with power moves and look for a power press or an upper body lock of some type. But I did not expect to see the extreme volatility of volatility of the explosion type wrestling that we're having here, Gordon. And the moves that are being made are exemplary of the, the two probably the two finest wrestlers right now in the world today in this match. Certainly no question about that. And uh, Barbara, did you notice any nervousness on the part of either man when you were in the ring introducing them? I noticed that both men just wanted to get to it. They just wanted to start wrestling and get it over with, and that's what they were hyped for, and that's what they're in there to do. And so the moment of truth uh, has arrived, and both men now it's Jerry Wyndham with the side headlock, and uh, there's the power move that you were uh, talking about, uh, John. Uh, Kevin Sullivan utilizing that power that misses with an elbow. Well, the amount of power that is being exerted by both men, the amount of energy that is being exerted by both men, they are not using, uh, so we say, caution. Uh, I don't think either man intends to let this match go too far. They can't possibly be thinking in this mode. Uh, the cut most, you know, a lot of times when you don't have a quick time limit in there, you'll pace yourself out, as Mike was just saying, which is sometimes the smarter way to go. But both of these fellas are so up for this match, the caution has gone out the window, and they are going into moves that would be possibly the last moves in many matches. Well, that's exactly right here. We've got a prime example of two different types of conditioning. you got Barry Windham, who's more cardiovascular. He does a lot of jogging and calisthenics, where you've got Kevin Sullivan, who is strictly for power. Kevin has done 
squatted over 600 pounds before. He's done 50 repetitions with over 400 pounds, and he's two different conditionings here, and we'll see which one is going to hold out the best. Interesting observations on the part of uh, both Coach John Heath and uh, Mike Graham, and now it is uh, Sullivan caught in the side headlock once again by uh, Barry Windham, and uh, both men have been keeping up an intense pace thus far. Mike, I know that you've trained with both men, you've worked out with both men. Will you be able to spot any uh, early weakening, do you think, uh, in either man or any early tiredness? I'll tell you, Gordon, at this point right now, it'd be really hard to say because that's one thing about professional wrestling. When you've got an hour time limit, you've got a lot of time to, to mentally wrestle your opponent. You can make him think you're weak. You can make him think you're tired by maybe slowing down a little bit, relaxing some, trying to get into it, relax, and then you catch him off guard. I would have to say that, that I would be watching out if I were Barry for Kevin because he has more wrestling experience. He'll try to lure Barry into thinking he's tired or thinking he's hurt when he really it. And when Barry lowers his guard, that's when Kevin's going to come at him. Excellent observation. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break here in the action to cut away uh, for a commercial message. And should a pinfall or submission hold happen during this commercial break, we'll bring it to you an instant replay. We'll be back in a moment. Now, no pinfall or submission hold has occurred up to this point. And it is uh, Kevin Sullivan catching Barry Windham uh, with a forearm. And Barry Windham retaliates with another forearm and a standing drop kick. But uh, Sullivan was backing away. And now Sullivan pressing that advantage. And these men, the heat's beginning to, uh, in my opinion, take its toll to it. There's no doubt about it. However, you know, he's trying to bring him over into a Boston crab. And this could be a submission right here. Tremendous upper leg power by... Wyndham got him out of there, however, Sullivan crucifixed him into a lock, and now he was crucifixed by Wyndham. There is a whip over by Sullivan to get, a, get himself out of that predicament that Wyndham had gotten him into, and sizing up the total predicament, reverses and takedowns. I have Wyndham ahead here by about three points at this point of the match. Well, there you have it. The word from uh, Coach John Heath, of course, completely out of earshot of uh, Barry Windham and Kevin Sullivan that he has uh, Windham uh, slightly ahead on points now. And I noticed that uh, Jake the Snake Roberts uh, watching uh, from near ringside and uh, he was a man who was eliminated uh, early on and now hold by Barry Windham and uh, Wide Pants has that uh, other foot press and uh, now Windham beginning to utilize that size, Mike. You know, that's right, Jordan, because up until now, not only on points was Barry ahead, but he was controlling Kevin's head. He was controlling his jaw, making it hard for him to breathe as hot as it is out there. Wyndham now keeping that leg trapped and uh, pinning the other leg with the uh, flat of his foot. The referee, Bill Alfonso, down, checking those shoulders very carefully. And uh, Mr. Sullivan has himself a problem, John. That's true, but with all excruciating pain that he was suffering, he was just thinking, he was thinking offensively. Again, he's not thinking defensively at all. Uh, from that position of predicament he went, he reached over, got a top Nelson on Wyndham, and they had him pinned down in a, a very outside loose cradle. However, Wyndham was able to come out of it, and then finally Sullivan kicked him off. A uh, form of the key lock, it's known as a drop uh, wrist lock, Sullivan took Wyndham down with. I thought he might co cover him there, and here he has him in a forced upper wrist lock against the hole. Now he drops it down to the south, or we, we call it the south, or into a base wrist lock, and he's going to whip him off into that rope, looking for a percussion-type move, and there's the sweeper. He's got the sweeper on him, and this may be it for Barry Wyndham. As Kevin Sullivan, an expert with that sleeper hold, has closed in on uh, Barry Wyndham. Has him down on the mat, and uh, Wyndham has been able to move his head just enough that... Uh, and he breaks it! He broke the sleeper, but it's taken its hold, and uh, Kevin Sullivan very quickly closing in, now beginning to punish Barry Wyndham with the uh, back of the elbow. And Barbara, you may be uh, moving up to that ring momentarily to present that belt. I don't know, Gordon. I think both of those men see that belt right in front of their face, and they're not going to give up until they can't move. He dropped cradle in there by Sullivan. However, Wyndham was able to bounce back. And as I've mentioned many times, when you are in the process of, of pinning someone, you are in a very 
possible predicament yourself as the experience right there by Sullivan, who had gotten in a little too deep. Wyndham able to rock back and put Sullivan back in predicament, and right now it is four point advantage for Wyndham in my score. And Wyndham uh, seems to have recouped extremely well. Caught with a shoulder smash that time, however. And Mike, it looks to me like they... Ooh! Sullivan through the rope. As he uh, tried to clear uh, Barry Wyndham and Sullivan through the rope, that obviously has uh, injured that left knee. The count is on. Count of four. Five. This should be it. Could be it if Kevin can't get back in the ring. He's made it back in, but he's got his problems now. They came out on that knee. And beautiful display of sportsmanship here. Look at this. Barry Wyndham in the far corner, giving this man every opportunity to get back into action. Certainly a fine display of sportsmanship, and uh, I think this typifies the kind of rivalry we're seeing here today between uh, this man, Kevin Sullivan, and Barry Wyndham. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. We'll be back in a moment. Into the ropes now, and the referee has called for the break, and Sullivan closes in very quickly on him. And uh, it may be, uh, Coach, that Sullivan may have felt he was a little bit behind and is now uh, uh, trying to press that advantage, but Barry Wyndham has uh, got him in a hammerlock. Well, he is employing the holes that I thought I'd be looking for out of Sullivan, upper body lock. Whereas Wyndham, I think, is going to have to look for a combination type of a hold than Sullivan. I also... Notice, however, that he had a beautiful spin on there by Wyndham. And he's got the last one. Look at that, get on him quick enough. Got him with that Larry. A very jarring move right there in the rope. If you talk about sportsmanship, it's really more intensified than ever when you think of what, what took place here. Even if you had two good friends in there wrestling. One knowing that the other, one knowing that the a win here is only one step away from the world title. Boy, I mean, the pressure is intense and the stakes are very high. So, and to be the strongest type of course, you get high, you have to give credit to both men at this time. Beautiful spin on your there by Sullivan. And he's working himself into a Sullivan bar and no. And Jim Garvin out here, another man who has been eliminated, uh, who is the Southern heavyweight champion, who is hoping to hold both titles. But today, uh, he is a spectator, and it's Sullivan really trying to tie Wyndham up here now, and uh, underhooks uh, both arms, and uh, going for it. Ooh! Wyndham driven down on his head. Came out of it, and that just amazed me. I thought it was all over, but he came down well, on his head. Kevin hooked him to bring him up for a double arm suplex, but right in the middle of the suplex, dropped straight back on his face. There's a deep drop inside three old duck knife. He came out of it, however. Now, uh, one of the reasons possibly for that suplex, don't forget that the physical toll would have taken place there, Mike. It, their strength has to be ebbing somewhat right now. You're exactly right. We're seeing right now the man who's been training the hardest, the man who's been running the extra miles, who's been pushing the extra weight. We're going to see it come in advantage right now. Here comes a double line crucifix in here by Sullivan, and that's to be it. Right there's the back and leg strength we saw Kevin Sullivan pulling Barry Windham right over backwards when Barry had actually been the man to initiate the hope. There was the upper body lock he was looking for. However, there was that long leverage that Wyndham uses to make the escape there, Gordon. No question about it. Uh, an outstanding match between these two men. And a uh, classic uh, situation here. Uh, one man holding the height and uh, reach advantage. The other man, smaller, more compact, a lower center of gravity. But uh, has Wyndham in a lot of trouble now. He's tied up uh, the one arm with his leg and uh, hooked around the waist now predicament and Wyndham exerting everything he's got to bring that shoulder back off and uh, truly uh, these men are now I think beyond their own limits. Well, he is and uh, he's got him in what is known as a butterfly in uh, collegial wrestling and in collegial wrestling this is not a legal hold because it's potentially a but however the power of Wyndham brought him out of there and I'm telling you that takes power. Tremendous amount of heart as well, man. You've got to have such intestinal fortitude here. And he brings him up the atomic knee drop and Sullivan in trouble. And so Wyndham now moving in, trying to get a lateral press and into the rope. Into Again, the rope. Kevin always knows where he's at in the ring. Instead of straining at that point to try to kick out, all he did was put his leg over the rope. He got that little second he needed to rest and try to regain some energy, and he always knows where he's at in the ring. 
Sullivan had enough for a full body slam. Kevin Sullivan countered it very nicely and uh, brings Wyndham back down to the canvas again. And uh, the heat and the intensity of this match taking its toll on both men. Uh, they have been going non-stop. And Wyndham caught with a knee to the side of the head. And again, as I said earlier, Sullivan might have sensed that he was slightly behind and is really putting the coals to Barry Wyndham. It certainly is, and now he's still working on the upper body lock. That's, that's what I suspect it would come off here with Sullivan. And when you think that the best condition collegiate wrestlers in the country don't go, they, you know, they have time limited. Eight minutes, two, three, and three. Now look at these fellas here. And the time you think is elapsed is well over the 20 minutes here. Is that right, Gordon? Exactly. We're uh, well over 20 minutes in, and... Uh it was uh, Sullivan that time trying to move on Wyndham, Wyndham. And that's 20 minutes of solid body contact. And there's the bell. The bell ending uh, ending the first half. And uh, Coach Heath will be tabulating uh, his points. And at the beginning of the second half, we'll bring you his observations uh, as uh, to the first half of this match. We'll be back in just about six minutes. Second half of the Les Welsh Florida Heavyweight Championship Tournament. This is the final between Barry Windham on the left and uh, Kevin Sullivan on the right. And uh, Ken Houston, All-American out of Tennessee and uh, recently uh, turned a professional wrestler with us right now. Welcome aboard, Ken. Quite a day. Thank you, Gordon. Glad to be here. You know, I've been all over the United States this summer looking for competition. Wherever I go, they're talking about Florida. And from the folly of this match right here, I believe it. The competition is here, and that's why I'm here. Yeah, and of course, you were a uh, linebacker with Tennessee, and a fellow from Tampa was a pretty fair uh, lineman up there as well. Yeah, that's correct. Steve Tyner, I believe he's from Tampa. Uh, we played together back in 1970, 71. Great competitor. I know, too, uh, you were mentioning that uh, just before we came on the air that you were uh, likening some of the intensity and in the way these men were uh, moving into each other and some of the uh, films you watched to your good friend and Dusty Rhodes from West Texas. That's right. I haven't seen guys hit this hard since I did study the films from Dusty Rhodes. That's when I was coming up. Ken, certainly a pleasure to have you with us, and uh, we're going to get back to this match. We're looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you in action. Okay, thank you, Gordon. Ken Houston, ladies and gentlemen, All-American out of Tennessee Coast. Uh, we're into the uh, second half of this. How did you... Oh, beautiful move by uh, Sullivan. There's that power that Mike Graham and Coach were both talking about. How did you have that first half for? Well, Wyndham had quite a lead on uh, Sullivan there, but right uh, towards the end of that first uh, round, the first half, there, Sullivan really kicked it in. Uh, however, Wyndham is or was still slightly in the lead. And uh, right at this point, it's just about even. And Mike, it looks to me like uh, Sullivan uh, perhaps uh, was able to take more advantage or got better advantage out of that uh, uh, break than Barry Windham. He seems to be uh, the fresher and the more offensive of the two. I don't know if it's fresher and more offensive, but he's definitely coming out with a different attitude. You can see he's got more determination in his face. He's almost like a different person when he comes out there now. He's getting much more aggressive, uh, doing some things that might be questionable, but it's obvious that he's out to win. This is where your more experienced athlete, the man that's out there for the money, he's going to be coming on stronger now because they both know they're good competitors. One's going to have to wear the other one down. There's not going to be any nice way to win this match. One is going to have to go all out, and that's just the way it is. Kevin Sullivan arm whipped into that far corner. Winda missed with a lock breaker right. Uh, four on, and Sullivan closing in very quickly. A full body slam into a lateral press. Hooked that far leg, but Wyndham again able to power up. Talking about Sullivan coming out here, Gordon, uh, I was privileged to have excellent coaches with me, and 40 of the last 44 games we were able to win. At, however, 29 of those were won in the second half. And I credit my coaches for being able to get that team up for that second half and coming out. And you find out then in that second half who really wants it. You ask yourself, who do I really want it? Do we really want it? And that's to me the attitude that Sullivan has right now. He wants it bad. I'm sure that Wyndham does too, but it's a case here of who wants it the most. And I think, as you pointed out earlier, Mike, too, it's the man now. Stamina and endurance is beginning to become the telling factor here. It's the man who's done the extra miles, who's done the extra uh, uh, training that uh, may take the edge. You're exactly right. And both these men right now, you can tell they're starting fatigue, but 
They have been wrestling over 30 minutes. And in any other sport, there's not one solid 30 minute, 30 minute amount of body contact. All other sports and competitions have rest periods, falls, rounds, quarters, different halves. These men have been going at it hard now. Barbara, I think you would concur with me. These Both of these men said they were going to give uh, well over 100% in this match, and so far they certainly have. They certainly have. You can tell both of them are exhausted, and yet they can see that belt, they want it, and so they're going to give everything they've got and more. Caught him coming off, but Sullivan was staggered as well as their heads collided. And this may be a good time uh, as uh, Barry Wyndham starts to get to his feet. Wyndham coming off the rope. And Sullivan caught him coming down, drove those knees into his midsection. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. We'll be right back. It is uh, Wyndham now hooking on that arm, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, John, this, uh, these two athletes are just uh, absolutely astounding. I would have given anything to have this match a robot to win. However, I will settle for, settle for the world title coming in there on October 23rd. Oh boy, I'm telling you, the, these guys are working on adrenaline now, Gordon. Uh, it gets to a point after a while where your oxygen and life you exchange is not that important anymore. There's a reverse standing gut range by Sullivan, and just sheer power again doing it for him, but you get to the point after a while, it's adrenaline. And uh, I feel as if that's what most of folks have to be working on. Your top collegiate athlete again, a wrestler before, as I said, eight minutes is it. These guys are over half an hour at least. By uh, up and over his man by Barry Windham and uh, Sullivan broke it up again. And uh, a nip and tuck battle all the way uh, thus far. And uh, how are we looking on point? I don't want to tell you, there's a one point difference. And right now I've got Sullivan shaded right there. Even uh, right now, and that, that uh, possession move here right now, vantage move and blast here by Sullivan is what put him right there. Mike, this is exactly what you were talking about earlier. Sullivan now seems to be a little more in control, seems to be setting the pace a little bit more, and that's where the uh, the experience and the age is uh, perhaps telling a difference. That's right, because Kevin knows a little bit better. He can gauge the time a little bit better. Nobody's calling any times out out there. You've got to try to keep mental track of how long you feel you've been there. Both men know that there's going to be a winner, but if there's not a pinfall sport or submission hold, that John Heath is going to declare someone a winner. So a lot of times you can, a champion can lay back and relax and just be defensive, and if it goes the time limit, then he remains a champion. But both these men know they've got to be making offensive moves. They've got to be trying to beat each other because, like you said earlier, if there's not a pinfall, if there's not a submission halt, John Heath will declare a winner. So there's no time for him to lay down and rest. They've got to be coming at each other constantly. Actually, both of these men are challengers, and the belt is the champion who they're taking on, and that's who they want. They want the belt. And as I said before, five Florida champions. The next step was the world title. Both these men have it in deep in their mind, along with a factor of pride and a desire just to win this match. Tremendous tried to and lift there by Sullivan. That tried hurt. to set him up for that shoulder breaker, but Barry wiggled and squirmed, and Kevin couldn't do it. Even the strength that Kevin's got, he still couldn't hold him. There's a good example of Barry knowing where he is, paying attention, taking that little minute to rest, just putting his foot on the rope, which of course makes the referee break it, and he gives him that little extra breather. Rear chin lock now by Kevin Sullivan and uh, Barry Wyndham. Both men uh, fighting for air now, and uh, the heat and the humidity, uh, a tremendous factor here at the uh, Sportatorium. And uh, both men uh, showing the signs of, uh, of fatigue, but as uh, Coach Heath said a few moments ago, uh, that adrenaline is really flowing, and these men, uh, uh, really a superhuman effort on the part of both of them. And uh, blocked by Wyndham that time, and uh, we're going to uh, break away. Remember once again, should there be a pinfall or submission hold during this commercial break. All right, and it is uh, Barry Wyndham closing in on uh, Kevin Sullivan once again, and Wyndham now using that forearm very, very effectively. And, uh, Coach, it looks to me like uh, the way this match is going, it's uh, the responsibility may well rest upon your shoulders for a decision. Yes, and uh, doing the very best job that I'm capable of doing, and right now, if it were to end, it would be Sullivan by two points. And that's, that's, that's that close. Looking at, looking at who may have the advantage here now, 
aerobically, women should have because of the extra muscle power that uh, Sullivan has put on himself that does take an awful lot of lactic, uh, lactic and oxygen exchange. However, Sullivan is back to attacking the upper part of the body, the upper body lock, and that cuts the wind off from coming in the window. So it's lip and tuck right now. Look at that. Beautiful cross body block by Barry Windham as he closes in on Kevin Sullivan once again. And in the last 22, 23 years, there's only been three matches that ever went to time. Oh, my God. Caught him uh, as he went to leapfrog. Sullivan, in a defensive posture, caught uh, Windham and caught him uh, uh, in the abdomen. Uh, and Wyndham in a lot of pain right now. Right here's a display of sportsmanship. They've had a hard-fought battle. It's been a good contest. Something like that can happen. There's Kevin giving the man a break, letting him catch his win. A low blow like that is a very dangerous thing. Woo! Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Oh. What has he done? I don't know why he did it, but he did it, and he what is the winner. What has he done after a match like that? Sullivan literally uh, booted up. Field oh, going, I can't that. believe this. I just can't believe this. Kevin, what the hell is wrong with you, man? What do you mean? After a match like that, how could you do that? You're right. Hey, don't touch me, bro. You're right. I didn't want to win the belt this time. Like, let me tell you, I know it was wrong. You know what? As long as we've known each other. I know. Other. And the I don't want to win the belt this year. I know what you want.